Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today my guest is Ben Sander. He is an AMD fellow. And uh, why don't we join that interview in progress? Today we're here to talk about the Radeon Open Compute Platform, Rock'em, right? Um, so, so why don't you start at the beginning here. What's, what's your day job, Ben? Right. Hi, Rich. Um, so I'm a software architect, so I, I, don't, I don't usually dress like this. This is special just for you today. Um, so most of my day, some of it's talking to customers. Some of it is on a good day, I get to write a little bit of code that actually goes into the Rock'em stack. A lot of what I do is, is make the key decisions and help, to help the team to focus on what the right priorities are for our customers. So I, I see you brought some slides here. Can you tell us more about Rock'em and what's, what's going on? Yeah, so, so let me start at the beginning. You know, and this goes back to AMD's entry into the HPC space. So this is maybe 10 years ago. But, but really the point is we've been here before and we, we really were a disruptive force. And if you think about 10 years ago, we were kind of on the edge of, of what was kind of, could have been a dark time. You know, people were coming out with proprietary 64-bit architectures. We still had front side bus. AMD was really key to changing all that. So we introduced the integrated memory controllers. We did x86-64, which was an evolutionary change to x86, so everybody could continue to run the same software. And so we have, a, we have our chops, right? We have a long history in this space, and we've kind of been um, somewhat invisible. We've kind of disappeared over the last couple of years, but really the key message is, is we want to get back. And part of that, part of this on the CPU side with our, with our Zen CPU, which we've made some announcements about recently, and then also on the GPU computing side. And GPU computing is kind of exploding, right? With all this machine learning, a lot of people are building server clusters that, that, are, that are composed of GPUs. I work on the, the Rock'em stack, which is our software stack that runs on those discrete GPUs. So I have these slides. We kind of did the first one. Yeah. And the second one, really the point is, we, AMB uh, historically has been an innovator. We brought a lot of things to, to HPC area. And the same is true even if you look at our recent history. So, this is DOE investing in AMD. So AMD has more than $50 million of funding from the DOE over the last four years, which may make us the, the largest company that the DOE has funded, the, the largest amount of money. Uh, we have the first HBM GPU product. So this came out uh, more than a year ago, right? A lot of people are talking about bringing HBM to the market in the future. We've had a product on a GPU in the market for about a year. Uh, 14 nanometer GPU, um, so that's the one on the right. Extreme performance per watt efficiency. So this is our we call it our Fiji Nano product. So because of the HBM is extremely low power, and we also packed a lot of flops into that part, you get a very, very highly efficient part. So it's 45, 46 gigaflops per watt. I think that's, that's a leadership part. I'm throwing all the numbers out here. Um, and then Rock'em. So one of the really innovative things about Rock'em is that it's a fully open source platform for HPC and GPU computing, which I think is the only one in the market. You know, our, our competitors all use some nice stuff, but it's all closed and proprietary. Sometimes I talk about open, but ours is truly open. So, see, so yeah, I wanted to tell you a bit more about what I work on, right, which is this Radeon open compute software, what we call Rock'em. So uh, my partner, Greg Stoner, uh, and I came up with this. He came up with the name Rock'em. Um, not his only contribution to the project, but maybe the most significant one. Because um, Rock'em, it's a great name, but also lends itself to a lot of uh, really nice acronyms. So we have a kernel driver that's Rock. Rocker is our runtime. Those are the software components that make up Rock. But, but if you step back, there's really three things that we were trying to achieve. The first was performance, right? For HPC performance, absolutely critical. Software for performance, part of our job is really just to get out of the way and let the applications talk directly to the hardware. So we really did a lot of focus in the Rock'em stack on reducing the latency between the CPU and the GPU. So latency to copy data, latency to get something start, to start running on the GPU. And there's a you know, collection of technologies that, that support that. If we have time, I can go into that on another slide. Second point is open. So I just mentioned that, you know, open solution, open source. So everything is open, including, for example, even the description of our GPU ISA. So we document what that is. We give you assemblers. We give you a set of tools. Our compilers directly generate the ISA for the GPU. We don't go through an intermediate language like HSAIL or PTX or graphic stuff. Uh, our kernel driver is open source. The entire software stack is open source. All the libraries we're developing. So this is really, really a differentiator. We've had customers that really benefit from this because they want to interface their components or their kernel level drivers with ours. And the fact that uh, they can see our source code, we're in an open source repository, very, very helpful for that, for that level of interaction. So freedom is, uh, is how we let uh, people program our GPU. So we're not going to dictate that you use a single programming language. Uh, we'll keep things open. Uh, one of the things we've done is provide a path so that 
applications that are written in CUDA can be ported so that they run on top of the Rockham stack. So this, this goes into a ton of detail. Um, we probably won't have time to cover it all, but to, to hit the high points here, right? So we did a, we did a headless Linux 64-bit driver, kind of kind of table stakes for the HPC market. Some of the features that are here uh, really allow you, we, really what we're doing is treating the GPU as an accelerator more than a graphics device. So it's got memory, you wanna be able to allocate all that memory. You wanna be able to talk to it efficiently through these user level queues. And you also wanna be able to build systems that have more than one GPU in them. Uh, people put four, eight, or sometimes even, even 16 GPUs in it. And you want those all to be able to talk to each other efficiently without having to go back and forth to the host. So we built all those capabilities into our driver. A uh, lot of work on the compiler side. So I mentioned we can go directly to the GPU ISO. We give people an assembler and we actually document what the different fields are of the, uh, sorry, we document the instruction set. So you can really learn a lot about how our GPUs work. Um, hardware and software. So these are some of the, the key capabilities. And the point here, we, we really, um, the driver that we're building for HPC is focused on, or it leverages a lot of the work we use, we develop for HSA. So we've talked about HSA over the last couple of years, and we're taking some of those same technologies that we built as part of our HSA projects and applying them to the HPC space, bringing that technology into HPC. Um, and then open source tools and libraries, as I mentioned before, from the, the kernel level drivers all the way up through the math libraries and the machine learning stuff, all is open source. So this slide talks about the different ways to program our GPUs, and there's, there's really three different languages that we've focused on. The one on the left there, the HIP, has proven to be the most popular. This is what, this is what lets people take existing CUDA code and really gives them freedom of choice. So they can run on either an AMD platform or they can go back and run on the existing NVIDIA platform with the same performance as coding in native CUDA. So, uh, you know, a lot of people, this gives them an ability, access to portability to different platforms. Um, the way that it works, you, you take your CUDA code, you run it through a tool that we call Hipify. The Hipify tool produces HIP code. That HIP code can run on either platform. And uh, we've built up a runtime and infrastructure that lets it run on AMD. On the NVIDIA side, we go back through the, uh, the NVIDIA NVCC compiler. So you get the same performance as native CUDA. You can also use the, the debugger and the profiler tools because it, it intercepts above CUDA. So very nice portable solution that gives you the best developer tools on either platform. Um, we offer a couple other options. HCC is a, is a forward-looking language. If you look at where this, the ISO C++ standards body is headed, there's a lot of interest there in evolving C++ so that you can express parallelism in C++ and target CPUs, multi-core CPUs, or SIMD parallelism, or GPUs. And so HCC, as, a, as the C++ committee introduces some of those features, HCC is our, is our vehicle to deliver those into our customers. Um, and then OpenCL is the third language you offer. OpenCL has been, been around for a while. There's existing code out there. There's, there. It is an industry standard. It runs on a wide variety of devices as part of the appeal. Uh, we do hear from people that it's hard to program in some cases, so that's why we offer some other options. But as far as number of platforms that are supported, CPU, GPU, FPGA, OpenCL is a, a really good solution for that level of portability if that's what you need. Well, you know, this is really terrific to see from you guys, you know, uh, what you know, the performance of the AMD GPUs has been there for, for years, and to make it transparent like this, I just want to congratulate you. This sounds like a really terrific strategy for AMD. Yeah, thank, thank you, Rich. I mean, we're, we're really excited to bring this to the market. We've talked to a lot of customers, and uh, I really feel that the features we're delivering here are, are what our customers are asking for. All right, I'd like to thank my guest, Ben Sander from AMD. That's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.